Local and absolute extreme values. So we'll try to understand what do we mean by local and absolute extreme values as far as the graph of the functions is concerned. Let's sketch one graph and then figure out what are we looking for. Let's say we have a function like this and we say we have a lot of peaks in here like this and let's say it stops here. And let's say that is our function, right? Now as you can see in this particular graph that we have some maximum points here, right? And minimum points. So this is maximum, this is minimum, this is maximum, this is kind of minimum points, right? This is maximum with respect to its close by values. Do you see that? This is minimum with respect to the close by values. In the neighborhood, it is minimum. So similarly, if you consider that point, so within a very close interval, you'll find that it has maximum, kind of peaks out. And this is kind of goes down in the valley. So that kind of a function, that kind of a graph when you see for a function, you know, those are your maximum and minimum values, but they are local. They are like only for a small limited portion. So these values, which are the lower portions, we call them local minimum values. And these values, which you see like the peaks, they are local maximum values. Right? And also you'll find that as far as the function is concerned, it does have a maximum. This this is like, there's nothing more than that during the whole graph which you see here. So we call this as absolute maximum. Similarly, this one seems to be the lowest point. So this is our absolute minimum. It is not necessary to have absolute maximum minimum at the ends, right? It could be at the center also. You've seen graph of a parabola, for example, right? So we have absolute minimum and local minimum same also. So there is a possibility of both being same also. We have same absolute and local minimum in this case, right? So, so that is possible, correct? what we notice most of the time is that these local maximum minimums occur when there is a turning point. So whenever the graph turns, so what we are seeing is whenever it changes from increasing to decreasing, then we have maximum. And when it changes from decreasing to increasing, then we have minimum, right? That is one way of looking at it, right? Now, as far as the functions are concerned, when we talk about uh, increasing and decreasing, so what in function when we find derivative, if the derivative is greater than zero, then we say function is increasing, right? And if the derivative is less than zero, then we say that the function is decreasing. So basically, if we try to find a point where derivative is equals to zero, then we know it's a critical point. So we call that as a critical number, right, or a critical point. So, so in this case, if you find derivative of the function, we'll find that these are our critical points, right? So, and if we observe what happens to the derivative before and after, so in this case, before it is plus, right? So it is derivative I'm talking about. So it is increasing and then it is decreasing. Since it changes from increasing to decreasing, we have a local maximum. And in this case, it changes from decreasing to increasing. So we have a local minimum. So that is another way of algebraically finding with the help of derivatives, the points on the function graph where it could be increasing or decreasing, right? Now the other things are the end points of the function, right? So at the end points, we could always have absolute maximum minimum, right? There is a possibility that this function could have been the lowest most point. So a local maximum minimum, as you can see here, could be also absolute maximum minimum, right? There's one more critical case which I would like to highlight here. At times, you can have functions which are, as you have seen, absolute function, right? So in this kind of a function, if I find the derivative, 
then I know f dash 0 does not exist, right? Does not. The derivative is 1 here and negative 1 here for absolute x, but it does not exist at this point, correct? So that is also a critical number. So for critical number, we have two criteria. One is f dash x is equal to 0, and the other one is f dash x does not exist, right? Is not defined. Is not defined. So that is another criteria. Now getting back and combining all these things is that when we are looking after the points which are which could be absolute or local extreme points, that means maximum or minimum, then the way to go about is to find the critical numbers. A critical number is a point where the derivative of the function is either zero or it does not exist. Then once you get the critical points, you can actually find whether it is increase, changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing in the neighborhood of that point. Right? If it changes, then you have a local maximum or a minimum. Right? Now, the, another criteria which you find is the boundary of the condition. Right? So, one more analysis is to be done with respect to the boundary. Right? So, we call this as a closed interval. Let's say this point is at x equals to a and this point is at x equals to b. Then we will say that in the closed interval of the function within a and b, there could be absolute maximum minimum, right? So the value of function at a and value of function at b is kind of important to check. So to find local and absolute extreme values, the points of interest are the value of function at A, that is the boundary condition, value of function at B, the other extreme, and value of function at C, where C is a critical number. So these important points will give you how to find local and absolute extreme values for a given function, right? Now here, let me also say, what is the difference between local and absolute extreme values? major difference is that one you can have many local maximums and minimums you can see so many but as far as absolute extreme is concerned there will be only one absolute maximum and only one absolute minimum but you can have more than one local maximum minimum that is one thing and second thing is that local maximum minimum occur only in the limited domain in its own neighborhood correct and the extreme values are in the entire domain of the given function, right? So those are the two important differences which you should keep in mind. And with this, we'll explore more about this topic of local and absolute extreme values in these set of videos, right? Thank you.